Hey boys and girls, this is Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell's Math, just talking to you today about polygons and the coordinate plane. Our essential question, or what I want you to know by the end of this video, is how can you solve problems by drawing polygons in the coordinate plane? Alright, a couple definitions here that you need to be aware of. These are important. I would write these down in my Cornell notes if I were you. A polygon is a closed plane figure formed by three or more line segments that meet only at their endpoints. Okay, so a couple, couple things here. Uh, plane means it's flat. It's it it is in a plane. All right. Line segments are short lines. They have endpoints, and these polygons meet at their endpoints. Let's draw an example real quick. It says three or more. So here's three lines, right? And they're meeting at their endpoints. That's an endpoint. That's an endpoint. That's an endpoint. All right. Then it goes on to say a vertex is the point where the two sides of a polygon meet. The vertices of a polygon can be represented as ordered pairs and the polygon can be drawn in the coordinate plane okay so this is a vertex all three of these are vertices and they can be represented by ordered pairs so you can say zero zero and whatever and you can call them call them points okay all right so let's go ahead and solve a problem uh, in the textbook it had a problem regarding some floor tiles uh, i didn't want to go into the, the grand scheme of the, the floor plan i just wanted to actually draw these shapes and, and, and color them okay so we're going to plot these points here this is the first one i'm going to work on so a is three five so i go three and then up to five and that's my first point that's a all right we did that one b is four six four six is b all right so we did that. C is 5, 5. So 5 and then up to 5 is right here. And that's point C. And then finally D is 4, 4. All right. And then connect them in order. So A, B, C, D. And then we come back to A. Okay. And then it says what shape was made. It looks like it's a, it's a square actually. All right. Kind of laid on its side. All right. So we have a square. All right. Let's plot these next points. It says P... Uh, is negative 5, 2, so we go to negative 5, and then positive 2, and then that's point P. All right, so we got that. Q is negative 4, 3, negative 4, and then 3 is right there. So that's Q. All right, R is 0, 3, 0, and then up to 3 right here. This is R. All right, S is 1, 2, so 1, 2 would be S. Um, so we got that. Then T is 1, negative 2. So 1 and then negative 2 would be T. All right, we got that. U is 0, negative 3. 0, negative 3 is U. V is negative 4, negative 3. Negative 4, negative 3 is right there. That's point V. And then finally we have point W which is negative 5, negative 2. So negative 5, negative 2 is point W. Then it says go ahead and connect the points in order. So we started with P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, and then back to P. So what shape do we make here? Looks like an octagon to me. Okay. Looks like an octagon. All right. Let's move on to the next one. So we can use that information. If we know how to draw these shapes, we can use that information to find perimeter. Okay, and that's one thing we can find. So it says the grid shows the path Tommy followed when he walked from his home at 0, 0. Okay, so this is his home, 0, 0. Okay. <clears throat> to various locations and back home again. Each grid square represents one block. All right, so each grid square represents one block. How many blocks did he walk? Okay, so we started at home. We got that one marked. Then he went to the library at 0, 4. All right, that's the library. Now how we do this is we just count the number of squares. All right, we got 1, 2, 3, 4. So from here to here, he walked four blocks. All right, then he went from the library to the park. And the park is at 5, 4. So 5 and then up to 4. Right there is the park. Let's go ahead and label these. This is H for home. This is L for the library. This is P for the park. So we count the lines, the blocks, I mean. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So from here to here, he walked 5 blocks. Then he went from the park to a friend's house. All right, I'm going to believe that's going to be the friend's house. We're going to label that F. That's at 5, 2, which is what that is. And that's 1, 2 blocks away. 
So from here to here, he walked two blocks. Then he went to the pond at 7, 2. So 7 and then up to 2. This is the pond. We'll call this P-O. <laughs> All right. And he walked two blocks there. So from the friend's house to the pond, he walked two blocks. Then he went to the store at 7, 0. All right. That would be an S. That's what that is, an S. And that is two more blocks. So from the store, from the pond to the store, it's two blocks. And then he went back home. All right, at zero, zero is what the, what, what the thing said. And back home again. All right. So he went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks all the way home. So now we got to add all these up. Oops, I'm kind of writing over my, my picture here. So I'll add them up to the top. Seven and two is nine. Plus two is 11. Plus two is 13. Plus five is 18. Plus uh, four is 22. So he walked a total of 22 blocks. All right, simple as that. We can also write the area, okay? Or we can find the area of a shape using the coordinate, the coordinate plane. So here in this problem, it says that Caleb is planning a new deck for his house. He graphs the deck as a polygon, A, B, C, D, E, F, on a coordinate plane in which each grid unit represents one foot. The vertices of the polygon are at these points here. And it says, what is the area of the deck? All right, so the same thing. So we just need to go ahead and plot it. So point A, we'll use red for this. Point A is at 1, 0. So 1, 0 is point A. B is at 3, 2. So 3, and then up to 2 is B. That's point B. All right, we got those. <coughs> C is at 3, 5. So 3, 5 is right here. That's point C. Point D is 8, 5. So all the way over to 8 and then up to 5. That's point D. Point E is 8, 2. Got that one. That's point E. And then F, 6 is point, uh, or F is point 6, 0. So 6, 0 is point F. All right. And that we finished up. So what's the area of the deck? Well, let's go ahead and connect them. A, B, C, D. E, F, all right, right there is our shape. So this to me looks like a compound shape. We can divide this up into two smaller shapes. I don't know if it'll still show up. All right, but yeah, I'm gonna draw a little dotted line there. Here I have a rectangle. Okay, there's a rectangle. What's the formula for area of a rectangle? Well, area equals base times height. Area equals base times the height. I know it's one, two, three high, and I know it's one, two, three, four, five across the thing. So I got area equals the base, which is five, times the height, which is three. So the area of my rectangle is 15 square feet. On the other one, it's a, that's a parallelogram. Okay, so I can use the same formula. Area equals base times height. So area equals my base, which is one, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's how long that line is, five blocks long, and it is one, two blocks high. So the area of the parallelogram is 10. So to find the total area, I just add 15 plus 10, and I get 25 feet squared. All right, so that's two examples of, of how you can use a, a coordinate plane to draw shapes and help find perimeter, help find area, all right, or just kind of get an idea of what something looks like.